Hi everybody and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. I'm really excited you're here and let's go ahead and get right into the crafting. DIY number one. For this project, I am using Dollar Tree items, these socks that I found, as well as some leftover mop head strands that I used in another project, and a Dollar Tree pick. So I'm taking the first sock and I am just going to cut it off right at the top of the heel area. And then I'm going to flip it inside out and I'm going to use my brand new Sure Bonder hot glue gun that I am so excited about because I was in desperate need of a new glue gun. And I just sealed that so that I had just um, no hole in the bottom of my sock any longer. I tried flipping the top part in, decided that wasn't really gonna work for me, and so I just cut that off as well. And now I'm coming in with some of those glass stones, those flat stones or beads, I'm not really sure what you would call them, from the Dollar Tree. And that's just really to weight down the bottom of my sock, so I put a couple of handfuls in there. Now, I ran out of fiber fill, so <laughs> I was using the sock scraps, and now I'm using, you know, just some rags that I had from an old t-shirt, and then I'm going to seal it off with a rubber band at the top. We use what we've got, right? So now I am going to cut out the heel and cut off the toe in my second sock. I was looking at that for a second thinking, maybe I can make a nose out of that. And then I decided I didn't want the nose to be red. <laughs> so I am now attempting to seal that seam that um, from where I cut out the heel. And I was struggling with this a little bit. And then I finally realized just put some of your parchment paper in there the glue isn't gonna stick to that you'll be able to make your seam so that's what I did and I came in just ran a bead of hot glue and then folded it over on itself so that it would create a seam and I did that with it right side out so that once I opened it up again everything was right and I'm gonna use that seam to my advantage for where the hat flops over so I'm, I'm good with that seam so I cut off the top part of what's going to be the hat um, at a bit of an angle. And I'm sorry, I'm a little off camera here, but I'm just uh, cutting that more triangular in shape. You can see it now. And then I'm going to go ahead and seal that edge and make a seam for the little hat. Once I have that all sealed up with the hot glue, and you could totally sew this if you'd rather, but I'm just finding it really easy to hot glue. Turn it right side out again, and then I just put it on the little body to make sure that it was going to fit properly. Stuffing the hat with some of my other sock remnants, waste not, want not, right? Because I wanted to just make sure that the hat was gonna stand up the way I wanted it to on, the, um, on top of the body. Because she needs a head, right? So I'm gonna now come in with the mop strands, um, whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> and I'm going to wrap them around the top of that little nubby thing that I had created with the rubber band until I get enough of them on there so her hair is nice and full, pulling the hat back down over top of it. And now I am just trying to see if one of my little wood beads will work for her nose. And I was pretty happy with that. So I went around and sealed the hat down so that when I started messing with her nose, it wouldn't all come apart on me. So went ahead and sealed all of that, parted her hair and tucked the little wood bead in and secured it with some more hot glue. And this hot, this uh, wood bead set is something that I had gotten on Amazon. If you're interested in that, it is in my Amazon store and the link is in my description box. So now I'm coming through and I am just unraveling all of her strands of her hair and then I decided she was looking a little Rapunzel like <laughs> so I wanted to give her a bit of a haircut so I came through with my scissors and just trimmed off um, some of that excess I kind of liked the way it looked with it kind of hitting the the table but I didn't want it like puddled so um, 
her nose was causing everything to split apart down the middle though and I wanted that to be full so I did decide to come in with some of the pieces that I had trimmed off to fill in that little area under her nose and I was careful to do a thin enough layer that when I hot glued under there it was not going to be noticeable so all of the little ends are completely hidden you cannot see them to make it thicker I folded that up and tucked more in underneath so that again they would be camouflaged and you would not see the ends of these little strands that I was adding in there to fill in that kind of hole that the nose was making. So then I went ahead and trimmed off her hair here and there a little bit just to get it the way that I wanted it. And uh, once I'd had that all set, I'm just messing with her hair some more. And then I brought in my little flowers. I pulled off three little blossoms from the pick itself and hot glued those to her little hat. And this was actually covering up some glue that I'd gotten on the right side of the hat when I was trying to make that seam earlier. So happy accident. It just gave me reason to decorate her hat a little bit. And so I also wanted her to be holding a little um, blossom branch. So went back to my little wood bead stash and pulled out a smaller wood bead and that's going to be her little fist and so I was able to tuck the floral stem right in there and that she'll be able to hold it but then I decided she needed an arm too and I was trying to judge um, how long her arm needed to be I'm using smaller little wood beads for this I'm going to be attaching this to her body so I'm kind of trying to gauge how far out that's going to have her little hand sticking and ultimately I decided I really only needed two of those beads so I just popped it right back off the beauty of hot glue <laughs> if you want it again to be a more permanent hold you will want to use e6000 or something of that nature wood glue would work great with these um, but I was happy enough to just be using the hot glue for this purpose so I had glued her little arm to her body and now I'm gluing her little wrist or her fist, excuse me, to her arm. And so she'll just be holding that little blossom branch and she just makes me so happy. Of course, I got to fix her hair again. And there she is. Let me know what you think of this project. I just absolutely adore her. So if you are returning, thank you so much for being here. You all know how much I appreciate you. I just can't even tell you how much. So thank you. And if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Corey. I love doing all different kinds of DIYs, lots of Dollar Tree inspired crafts, and I post new projects every Friday. Today's video is super special though, because I am participating in Heidi Sonville's Friend Friday Hop. If you're not familiar with the hop, you're going to want to make sure that you look in my description box at the end of this video and click through to the next crafter in the hop. You're going to want to make your way all the way around through the hop until you get back to me because we are giving away a hundred dollar Amazon gift card. In order to enter, you just need to comment on every person's video in the hop. Good luck. DIY number two. For this project, I'm going to be using a styrofoam bunny from the Dollar Tree. You can also see I've got some tissue paper there also from the Dollar Tree. Just showed you my home decor Adirondack white chalk paint. Gave the bunny a good coat just so he had a nice base. And now I have this little box or crate, or I'm not really sure what you'd want to call it, from Michael's. It was 99 cents. My sister had picked it up from, for me. I think it was actually even on sale, so great deal. And I'm giving it one coat of celery chalk paint by Waverly. I was just showing you my Mod Podge. I am going to be using a gloss Mod Podge for this. But first, I am going to tear little pieces of my tissue paper off um, to separate the little floral pattern, if you will. And I don't know why. I'm holding the paintbrush and I'm not using my water yet. I guess I decided I wanted to try and see if I could just tear it without. But it's much easier to use the water method. So 
Essentially, you just dip a little fine pointed paintbrush in water and you use that to draw a line around your design and that allows you to easily tear around your design and it gives you control over where you're tearing. And the reason for tearing versus cutting, when you cut your paper and then try to apply it with your Mod Podge, the lines are very, the edges are very apparent. When you tear it, they become almost imperceptible. So highly recommend that you tear versus um, cutting. Now you did see me snip it right there. Um, every once in a while, I will come in and snip the design if I'm going around a curve and I need it to lay flatter and one piece will just lay over top of the other. And usually, I know it's contradictory to what I was just explaining with tearing versus cutting, but usually, I guess because it's overlapping the image itself, something about it being in the middle of the picture and not on the edge of your design, I don't know, somehow it camouflages it. So um, it all works out well. But this is kind of like putting a puzzle together. So you just want to, as you go, take a look at the white space that you have and take a look at the little pieces of design that you have to apply and just find pieces that are going to fit in the spaces that you are looking to fill in, just like you kind of would put a puzzle together. So I'm being pretty generous with the Mod Podge. As you can see, I've been going over the bunny with Mod Podge, applying the little design piece, and then going back over that with Mod Podge as well. You can do this with napkins. I usually do use napkins. This is actually the first time that I've tried using tissue paper. And I have to say, I really liked using the tissue paper. It's sturdier than a napkin. And so it didn't rip on me as readily as napkins tend to do. You have to be really delicate with, um, with napkins when you're doing Mod Podge, but this was a little bit sturdier. So while my bunny is drying, I am going back to my little box, which is actually gonna be the base to display our bunny on and so I wanted this to be a little uh, distressed and worn looking so I went in with my Dollar Tree sanding block and I sanded all of the edges focusing on the corners so now I have my little pedestal if you will for the bunny and now I'm going through all these little labels they are chalkboard labels that came with my Arteza chalk paint markers I identified one that was going to fit on the front of my little pedestal and I'm using my white chalk paint marker to be very literal. I'm writing the word bunny, but you know what? I was having such a time trying to get this to fit on this label. <laughs> I was just writing it too large. I kept having to do a recent and start over. Finally it occurred to me that Corey just flip the tip because with the Arteza chalk paint markers, you can actually take the tip out, turn it over, and it has a fine point on the other side of your tip. So third time was the charm with the pointy tip. I was able to fit my bunny word on here and all was well. So then I was able to just peel that off because it's just a sticker and I was able to apply it to my little bunny's pedestal. So now bunny has a little place to live. I love her. Let me know what you think. So today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. And if you're not already familiar with it, Skillshare is an online learning community where you can find thousands of classes on every topic imaginable, like illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and so much more. Their classes include a combination of video lessons and a class project, and you'll find classes for every skill level. And because it's all online, you can take the classes when it suits your schedule and you can learn at your own pace. Most of the classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons that can fit into your schedule and I so appreciate that because I am super busy with my full-time job and my YouTube channel. So as part of the sponsorship, Skillshare has provided me with a free trial and I've been taking advantage of classes on blogging, basic graphic design, using Canva, typography, and how to use Pinterest. Yes, I need help with Pinterest. <laughs> so I encourage you to check it out because the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your own creativity. And if you love it, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. DIY number three. 
So if you have watched my channel for a little while, this is looking familiar to you right now. This is something that we created this past fall and we're gonna replace the flowers with the spring colors I was just showing you from the Dollar Tree. If you have not seen this uh, video, or if you would like to see it again, I will leave the link to that fall video in my description box so you can go and see exactly how I created this. But they were essentially three little crates from the Dollar Tree. Obviously you can see I have floral foam in there. I have three candle holders and to elevate that middle one, I had used one of the Dollar Tree's double shot glasses. I think they call them little dessert cups and they come in a pack of, I wanna say three or six, um, but I had used one of those. So I had not used floral uh, moss the last time and I decided that I wanted to use moss. So I went ahead and tucked that in everywhere. I made a mess in the process. <laughs> and then I'm just coming in with my flowers. This is such a great project because once you build your base, you can switch out the flowers for every season. And obviously I hadn't done it for the winter season, but I did decide I wanted to do it for spring. And these flowers and colors are just making me so happy. I have irises that are just beautiful. There is freesia. I have narcissus. I have crocuses. Just, they were just making me so happy while I was making this. I was smiling the entire time. So again, easy project and something you can switch out throughout the year. Isn't that great? Adding my little candles back in and let me know what you think in the comments. So it's time for a shout out time out. Beautiful Bobby, thank you so much for sharing these projects with us. They are absolutely gorgeous. You did such a wonderful job. Thank you for sharing. And very nice Valerie, love is in the air. We've got a lot of beautiful Valentine's Day inspiration here. Very nice Valerie, thank you so much. And I would love to give you a shout out as well. If you have interest in sharing your projects with our audience, please send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com and I would love to include yours here too. DIY number four. So for this project, I have a couple of Dollar Tree candlesticks holders. I've got um, a couple of vases and I'm bringing in a bunch of different colors of chalk paint. I'm starting out with my Adirondack White by Home Decor and I'm going to be adding some of this slate blue color and the name of this is escaping me so forgive me. Um, I do have these in my Amazon store as well so um, I can totally get you the name of it if you drop me a comment and want to know what it is. But um, I'm just mixing the colors together. Now, if I had had more like a royal blue, I would have wanted to use that. This was just the only blue that I had in my stash. So I'm making do. I'm adding in some pink and some yellow because I just was having trouble getting it to the shade of blue that I was really hoping for it to be. I even came in with some of my Arteza mica powder <laughs> trying to give it a different um, color tone and bringing up um, the blue because it was more gray originally. So I finally got it to a color that I was happy with and I'm just going to give those candlestick holders or candle holders pedestals. I don't know what you'd call them, but I ultimately gave them a couple of good coats of paint. While they were drying from that first coat, I did come in and tape off my two glass vases. I don't know. I'm using them as candle holders, whatever you'd like to call them gave them a couple of coats as well and when they were almost completely dry i came back in and i peeled away the masking tape that i had used for this and i just find this so satisfying so i figured i would share both of these reveals with you because you might find it as satisfying as i do <laughs> so once everything was completely dry i came in with my star bonder hot uh, glue gun, which this is brand new. I just got it. I absolutely love it. I am not affiliated with them in any way, shape or form, but I just 
I'm so excited that I have a new glue, hot glue gun because I was in desperate need. Um, but then I came in with this really pretty cord that burlapfabric.com sent me. And it is like a burlap color with then a light green running through it. It's really, really pretty. And so I just wanted to tie a simple bow on the front of each of these candle holders. Look how pretty. I do have a coupon code for burlapfabric.com if you're interested. It's in the description box as well. But let me know what you think. DIY number five. So for this project, I have this little metal bucket from Edible Arrangements. I've got my Dollar Tree floral picks. And then I also have this paddle sign, which is a dry erase board, also from the Dollar Tree. And I'm coming in with my chalk paint markers and just writing Welcome Spring on here. And I'm using a purple and a pink. And in just a moment, you'll see me coming in and also um, drawing in some pretty flowers. I'm not sure why I left this part in where I'm like getting my marker set for you, but <laughs> sorry, I should have uh, edited that out a little bit. Um, but essentially with the chalk paint markers, when they're brand new, you do have to um, press down on the tip and get that paint loaded into the tip. So that was essentially what I was doing coming in with these really pretty spring colors making little flowers just wherever i thought that the sign needed a little bit of uh, a pop of color randomly all over the sign and then also coming in with my green and making little leaves for my flowers and you could do this however you want if you don't want little flowers you could put the little birds you don't have to put anything you could just put a border around it and do a different font I did a little squiggly line there because I thought it would be fun so then I left that just to the side to let it dry because it is paint right so um, those markers do um, apply chalk paint so you do need to give it time to dry and I pulled apart all my picks as I often do and I was just trying to see how it might look arranged in the bucket and I liked the way that looked and I am thinking that these are supposed to be you know fresh cut flowers um, but I needed a way to secure my sign so before I put it in there, I did decide that I wanted to do something on the reverse side of the paddle because it is a two-sided um, sign, which again is really cute. And I was thinking flower market when I did this. So it's not fancy at all, but I was thinking, you know, when you go to a flower market, everything is handwritten. It's very simple. And so that was my thought process there. Of course, I hadn't secured down my floral foam yet, so it was all falling over. So I came in with my hot glue, secured that down, and then I had loosened up that little hole that I made to hold my sign because it wasn't straight up and down, and so I was messing with it. So then I came in with some hot glue to secure that as well because I just needed to. <laughs> so <laughs> once I had that all situated and set, I came in with my flowers and I tucked them in around the sign until it was the fullness that I wanted it to be. I just didn't want that floral foam to show. And I suppose I could have put moss in there to hide that, but I really was going with the idea that these were fresh cut flowers that you could just kind of pick up out of the bucket. So let me know what you think. And here we are with the final reveal. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Thank you again for being here. I really do appreciate you. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and give me that big thumbs up. Also, be sure to go ahead and click through on the link in the description box to see the next video in the hop. And until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Take good care. I'll see you soon. Bye.